Hello and welcome back to This or That with Kobe and Dash. I was considering using one of our new names like the Agree or Clash, but... Yeah, you can't, you know what? The show, the identity of the show is this or that, and we can't destroy that. Uh, I'm happy to be a part of it, but let's hold <laughs> on to those pieces that once were. Uh, I heard we got seven slides today, Kobe, so we got a lot to get through. Let's get right into it. Always stay true to yourselves, by the way. You don't yeah, have right. to change for anybody, <laughs> even someone like James. Uh, better three and one team, FlyQuest or EG. This is definitely a hot topic. Uh, you know, the, the top four teams, honestly, are pretty hot topics. And my initial reaction coming off of EG taking down Team Liquid, which was previously undefeated, and doing it in such a magnificent manner with the split push uh, and Dezuke looking real good makes me say EG right off the bat. But you could argue FlyQuest lost to Cloud9 a bit better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think, I mean, and you know what? That's a fair argument. How do you really accept, uh, uh, assess, rather, the the level of loss that you take to Cloud9? <laughs> um, but that's where I kind of lean with you. I'm going, I'm going with that. I'm going with Evil Geniuses because of the dominance they have displayed in their victories. I'm not going to try and pick apart the losses to the number one team in the league with different, uh, you know, champ makeups or uh, team comp makeups. I'm going to index into Evil Geniuses really finding their aggressive play style and giving me confidence in that. I'm going that. Yeah. I'd say four right now. FlyQuest though, definitely yeah. looking up. Let's go next slide. More surprising success story, Solo or Kumo. Now, Same teams too, FlyQuest, I, DG. I like it, yeah, actually. Uh, Solo, his career has been dogged a little bit by complaints of toxicity or you know working mm. with other players. I think that where that's maybe some of the surprise might come from. Kumo, meanwhile, such a young player, um, had a big improvement for me over the years here with evil geniuses coming from spring to summer um everybody is laying on all these criticisms but he has started out summer looking exceptional yeah i i mean i i i recognize everything that's been said about solo but i do feel like he was a little bit more of a known quantity coming in right we we understood what we were getting there and his role within FlyQuest when he came in was really just to fill a hole Right, you know, plug a hole for the end of spring and get them through it. And yes, now they're starting he to- He called out. himself a glue man, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> see, just... so he agrees. Even the man himself agrees. And so I don't think his performance has been so surprising because I have understood what his job was from day one, what he was supposed to do. Kumo, on the other hand, I mean, I'll be honest, I wasn't sold on this going into spring. I was like, I really don't see the legs for this guy in the LCS, blah, blah, blah. But boy, has he really turned it on specifically here in the summer split and made himself look a bit like a threat. And, you know, all that while knowing that Hooney's, you know, you know, back there in the shadows, uh, you know, as a star, the fact that he's able to maintain his spot. Yes, import rules I know are funky, but like I've been really impressed by Kumo and surprised to say the least. I'm going that again. Yeah, uh, I think I'm slightly edging with Kumo also. My one little caveat is it's a lot of Vala Bear. So mm. uh, you know, maybe see some Vala Bear. All right, play some out. Wukong, make Mark Z happy, <laughs> and then... <laughs> I do like that Solo has also emerged as a carry for FlyQuest, though. He is definitely doing a lot. Uh, plus, I uh, hear good things about him being a better teammate. So yep. wins all around. Next slide. Oh. You hate, hate to see, see it. it. <laughs> Someday on Thanks. Uh, you know, they lost their, but to their Orn games back to back Ooh. to back or double lift on mages. I think there were problems with both of those drafts. Uh, the the TSM, TSM one they're talking about where they drafted a bunch of extra AP with it, the mid yeah. fiddlesticks. Um, Volibear even does a decent amount of AP damage. And they played the Syndra bottom lane into a very rough matchup for uh, scaling because right. uh, FlyQuest had a bunch of tanks on their side, so that made it really hard. So, so the reason why this is tough is because I'm still trying to kind of interpret the the top line of the, sl of the slide. You hate <laughs> to see it, right? So you hate to see it. My gut reaction from my perspective, the thing I hate to see more is I hate to see double lift on mages more because I think he's worse at them. Whereas someday, I think as a top laner has learned to play across all the play styles. It might not be as exciting on tanks, but he's still an expert and I still learn a lot, glean a lot. Whereas Doublelift feels like someone who's testing the waters and trying to figure it out and hasn't found that same success 
on mages. So from that perspective, I enjoy watching someday more than I enjoy watching Doublelift when Doublelift is on mages. Okay, I will say Doublelift on the Syndra, his individual performance on Syndra uh, did pass the bar for me. Okay. I'm also thinking back to the, the memes on his Vladimir though. Um, so maybe a bit bumpy there. I just think yeah. that he's also, like you're saying, Doublelift is so good at traditional AD right. carries. Don't you just um, want to see him on a vein or on a, you know, I just want to see the mechanics and uh, recognizing mid laners may just take mechanics. That's just not, that's not what you pay for when yeah. you come to see Doublelift. <laughs> I want to see someday on some Fiora and some Kale by the Ooh. end of the day though. Uh, right. I'll, I'll go with Doublelift also. Let's move on. Next slide. What do let's we Let's get them both on carries. That's <laughs> just like, let's just ignore Let's get them both on carries. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Delete one TF card from the game. Ooh, your mana ah. restore blue card or your gold card stun. Now, Which also does the most damage now, right? Blue card. They not only is it mana restore, but I believe it now does the most single target damage. And it's also interesting whose perspective do I do this from? I don't right. play TF. I would remove his gold card because I don't want to get stunned anymore. Exactly. Uh, TF players, would the TF player care more about the mana restore? No, uh, they just the, ask for the blue lane. buff and then they spam out the gold card. Because I feel like if you remove gold card, then TF loses so much of his identity, his power. Yeah. He's supposed to teleport in and stun a single target. So for me, I want to make him weaker. I'll remove yeah. the gold card. <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. If I'm playing against the TF and I, I don't play that champion myself, I'm removing gold card. No TF main in any world would elect to get rid of their gold card. Um, in fact, there's one very famous um, esports TF main in TSM Reginald who I know would probably <laughs> quickly jump at eliminating the blue card from the lineup. Um, so I think across the board, every league player would be aligned that, that, <laughs> that blue's what you wanna lose if you're a TF player. It's an older meme, but it checks out. The <laughs> next slide. <laughs> More deceiving a score line. 3-1 for CLG, 1-3 for Golden Guardians. I think CLG did have an easier schedule because they got to play both Immortals and Dignitas. who are playing yeah. very poorly right now, really struggling, um, losing all of their games. But I also think there have been real improvements for CLG incorporating the TF, like we just saw in the last slide, Poe Belter, yeah. it's one of his favorite champions to spam in solo queue. I I've known him for almost eight years now. He's played a bunch of this champion. It's really strong in the meta right now. So that's a good adaptation for them. Plus the Volibear for a ruined top. Meanwhile, Golden Guardians, I also think they are better than one in three as seen by their, their loss to Cloud9. And we're talking about right. judging teams by how badly you lose to Cloud9. They put up a very good fight. They did, they did. I, this is a very tough one. It's a very tough one because deceiving is the operative word here. So if it were surprising, then I would say I am surprised CLG is doing so well because I'm surprised by how many turnarounds they've made, the improvements they have made from split to split. But I'm with you 100%, Kobe, and a couple of my analysts um, from the desk this weekend who pinpointed that one of the reasons why they think CLG is winning is not necessarily because all the individuals overnight just became these top tier players and now they're number one in all of their positions. No, they have an understanding of the meta and have made this attempt to pick up some of those picks that other teams have yet to try. We've seen some of that flexibility and some of that experimentation in the mid and up to the top lane with Ruin. And so I'll give credit where credit's due there. I think that, you know, whether you want to attribute their wins to their uh, understanding of the meta or not, they're legitimate wins, and therefore the score is not deceiving. So All right, so we're both I going actually... with Golden Guardians then. Exactly. There you go. We're going All right. right. Next slide. Should Immortals... Oh, my goodness. How do we save Immortals? Okay. Oh, Should Lord. Immortals stick with this roster or start from scratch? Um, ah! The answer I, can't be stick with this roster, right? I mean, we were already not sold on this roster when the season started. I'm sorry. We just, we weren't. And we haven't seen evidence yet to the contrary, where uh, where in the past we've been open to that. Hey, I don't understand why this lineup is coming together, but if I start to see the evidence, okay, I'll change my mind. I'm not seeing it here. And again, I will always return to this idea that you have a Smithy on the bench and this dude Whatever team he touches, it turns to gold. It turns into a championship. Like get him on the lineup and figure out what he needs to be successful or who would be best supported by him. I don't think every piece of the current roster needs to go, but the current roster is not is not gonna net you anything here in summer, I don't think. Yeah, uh, at least, you know, choose something to build around. Like you're saying, I don't think any piece of the current one uh, they need to do. So let's 
yeah, I'm going with starts from scratch right now too. Uh, you know, heart, heart goes out to all the players as I know they're struggling and dealing with a lot of flame right now. And there's a lot of internal stuff going on with them as well. Uh, yeah. Let's move on to the next slide though. Get this out of here quickly. <laughs> uh, feel a lot better. All right, <laughs> better, <laughs> better emote es matter. escape emote. Uh, is it the thumbs up? Like, eh, good mm. attempt there. I'm a big fan of do of insulting someone by saying good try because yeah. to me as a super competitive person people mm -hmm. don't even say this trying to be insulting but when someone tells me good try i get mad yeah <laughs> because i always strive you know to to be the best and to uh succeed there so i think the thumbs up is great it kind of plays into that like oh yeah good try there buddy right uh, i mean that, or that's the dabbing the dabbing penguin i think thumbs up I think the thumbs up too, right? Because because it's entirely about what you said. It's trash talk. It's about getting into your opponent's head. And in this case, by telling them like, mm, I saw what you went for there, but you just <laughs> didn't get it, buddy. Like, good effort. Like, there's nothing that makes you angrier in competition than someone <laughs> being condescending, your opponent being condescending uh -huh. to you. If your opponent is just showboating about something good they did, then I just get more motivated. So yeah. when you do the dab thing, I'm just like, all right, dude, I'm come. I'm next time you show up to lane, you're dead. And it just motivates me harder. That would get in my head, and I think uh, I think that's Licorice, right? Who does that? Yeah, he's yeah. got it unlocked. He understands that mind game. <laughs> that's a big brain. All right, next slide. Wait, I wasn't counting. Are we at seven? Already? I think that's, that's it. Seven. That's seven. Ta-da! <laughs> Boom! Look at us. <laughs> Great episode, if I don't say so myself. Uh, please tune in to the LCS Friday Night League is going to start. Uh, I believe CLG plays one of the first games, so we can yeah. check back in on uh, you know one of the answers from that slide. Hot Thank start. you as always, James. Great having you here, buddy. I think our boxes are aligned this way. We try to do the every the high five. single time. This is we're never gonna get this. This is horrible. See, you gotta uh, strive to be the best. Don't say never. We're that's gonna true. we're gonna do that's it one true. time. By we'll the just end do it, no of this Boom. show, we will get it. We might be best friends in life, but we gotta figure out how to make it happen here on the air. So, all, all right. right, let's get out of here. See you next one. See you guys.